So, this is what we're going to be making a perfect sphere out of foam. Okay, now for the first step, we're going to attach our plane. 8 inch cube to our plate with three bolts right here. So essentially we're going to want to put it right on the middle somewhere and of course because these are two inch uh, increments we can just place it about there. It doesn't have to be exact, just close enough to be considered the center. Alright, so there we go. Those are all pretty snug. Maybe a little bit more there. We don't want that moving. There we go. So as I'm tugging on it up and down here, there's no uh, movement there in that gap. So we're good to go. Now we're ready to put it on the lid itself. That spins on righty tighty. So clockwise. And you'll notice that at a certain point, uh, it'll actually start to move the, uh, the spindle itself. You'll see that right there. Okay, so to make it tight enough, I'm gonna need to use these wrenches. So I'll put the black one here, okay? That'll hold it. And then I'll use the silver one, okay? And then I'll just cinch it up. So there we go. Those are nice and tight, tightened up against each other. So you'll see we've got about a quarter inch, half inch there. I'm also spinning it by hand, make sure I don't hit anything. I might have to cut, oh, there we go. That feels good. All right, now at this point, I'm gonna bring in our other support. You'll see that it slides on that and uh, I can tighten it down when we're close. There we go, that's as close as I can get it. Then I'm actually gonna press it in there embedding it into the foam. So that now is nice and tight, and then I'll lock it in place here with this lever. There we go. Okay, so here are the tools. They're in this little gray case. There's a bunch of them in here. We're not gonna be using all these. In fact, we're only gonna be using this little guy here. These are gouges, these are skews. So this gouge here is gonna be our medium gouge. You'll notice that it's round on the one side and cupped on the other. The cupped side is the one that we used to cut. The, the tool is going to be always in contact with not only our hand, of course, but also the tool rest. Our hand is also in contact with the tool and the tool rest. So all three, at all times, should be connected to each other. That gives us a nice stable uh, anchor from which we can cut. The other thing is our, our right hand is going to be further down in fact, much further down the tool. So this again gives us some nice leverage and we should uh, also put our feet so we're, we're nice and balanced and ready to, to move back and forth. The important thing is to keep the, the tool um, basically at parallel to the ground or above, okay? If I at any point go below, you risk having the tool getting pulled down in to the material and away from your hands. And, and our first cut is actually gonna be making this into a cylinder. So, Okay, so now you see that we've turned, obviously, our uh, cube into more of a cylinder. And we also have given ourselves some room underneath so that now I can move the tool rest further in towards the, uh, the other side here. So I'm gonna loosen this up. Now it slides underneath there. And now you see I've got enough room uh, to actually work the entire length of our cylinder. So I tighten that in. Again, I'm going to move it by hand, making sure that I have enough clearance here between the tool rest and the material before I start uh, the motor. Okay, so I'm going to finish up the cylinder and then we'll move on to the next step.
Now, basically what we're going to do is guess. We're going to guess at the shape of our sphere. Somewhere in the middle is going to be obviously the uh, highest point, and then we're going to move down on either side of that. It's a good idea to always move downhill, so we're going to start with that highest point and move uh, down towards the end. If we go the other way, we might end up um, catching the tool and cutting more than what we want to. Bring them apart from each other. Okay, and now I'm going to re remove this plate with our wrench. Okay. Alright, so now this uh, wooden cup has been attached and we're going to actually take the, um, this, the part of the sphere here that has its three holes from having been attached by the plate. We're actually going to turn that 90 degrees. So now we're going to be going at a, that other axis and we're actually going to seat the spherical part into the cup, making sure that it's seated in there nice and, and evenly. So find a spot where it's nice and, and cupped and you'll be able to, to tell that it's balanced. So once you've got a nice balanced part, we're going to move in our support. Don't be bashed. We'll go ahead and uh, tighten that up nice and tight. So now we're going to clean up that side. someplace where it feels nice and balanced. Angles. You can see that that flat spot is pretty minimal now um, in that in fact wherever I, t I turn it now no matter which angle it still is presenting something that's nice and balanced. Only now am I going to use the sandpaper. So sandpaper is going to take away some of these little chips um, but you should never use sandpaper in order to shape the form. So it's only for applying it a different surface texture. So um, with that, I'm actually going to move the tool rest out of the way so I don't get myself caught in between there somehow. And you can actually remove it if you um, loosen this piece here. That way I have nice, clear access to it. Alright, so that got some of those chips out of the way. I'll do that one more time and I think we should be done. Alright, so with our perfect sphere, of course, we can use that for all sorts of things, including uh, casting. So, what I did here is I split it apart and I'm going to use this as the interior surface to model the interior surface, um, which is what I did previously. So, here you see my wonderful geometry that I uh, put into this half blank, and then with that, I'm going to place it in relationship to this exterior surface. And I would do that um, as I did previously by attaching some sort of uh, support or wood um, to position it so that now I'm able to position it uh, perfectly in the center so that way I don't get like a side that's really, really skinny. Um, or really, really fat, so I can put that right in the middle. At this point, I would go ahead and pour the plaster in, um, which I recommend actually um, mixing inside of a plastic bag like this. There's nothing to clean up. Anything that's left over, I can just zip up and throw away. So after that's been for, of course, you guys know, like an hour or so, this is the type of uh, artifact that you're left with. It's really nice. Uh, smooth and polished um, after a little bit of work. Actually, this is what comes out something not quite so smooth.
but because it's plaster we can sand it we can do all sorts of other things to it uh, to make it more uh, concrete like so there you go